Hey guys, Auspicious Aussie here, and welcome to episode 10 of the Inter Miami series here on FM20. Now, today's episode, as you can see, is going to be another double header. We're going to be taking on Atlanta United at home, and then DC United away from home in the nation's capital. In regards to the season so far, as you can see, we've played six MLS games, and you would have to say so far, so good. We've won five, lost one. Currently sit on 15 points, one point behind New York Red Bulls. However, we do have a game in hand over them. So, you know, a couple of wins here today and we will more than likely go above them. Uh, if we go into the recent fixtures, of course, the previous episode was the 4-0 victory over Seattle and the 4-2 victory over Sporting Kansas City. We followed that up with a 1-0 victory over FC Cincinnati. Fabinho getting the only goal in this game. Pretty pretty convincing. Like I said, I actually said in the last episode that I'm, you know, quite happy to win 1-0. And this tactic does seem to be, well, with AC Milan anyway, more suited for a close scoreline. Uh, but we managed to also beat Nashville SC. Will Keane getting a penalty and a goal in the 45th, well, the 47th minute. Stoppage time in the first half after Dom Dwyer opened the scoring there for Nashville. We then also managed to beat Columbus Crew 1 0. Will Keane with a penalty there. Again in the 47th minute, second minute of stoppage time in a first half. And yeah, the most recent game I just played was against the New York Red Bulls. And as you can see, we lost 4 1 despite scoring in the first minute, which I thought was just insane because. I, honestly, I wasn't really expecting it, but as you can see, literally all four of our defenders at the back were dreadful. 6.5 for all four of them, which is not supposed to happen, really, with this tactic, and I was definitely shocked. Uh, this guy, Juan Juarez, who they got in the draft, I mean, he doesn't look that good. He's got good pace, he's got good physicals, actually, but nine finishing... And composure, pretty disgusting, to be honest. And the fact that he scored two goals, uh, yeah, it, it really didn't fill me with a lot of confidence. Um, also worth mentioning that if we look at their team here, as you can see, Pellegrini getting himself a or an assist there, uh, which was pretty pretty annoying, yeah. Considering, you know, we traded him away for that international permanent international slot anyway those are the fixtures updated we jump into the lineup for today's game it's going to be a tough one against atlanta they're actually in third just behind us at the moment so yeah it's going to be going to be a tough one for sure in goals going to go with mcdermott olasunde at right back zimmerman and abubakar as our two center backs gaza is going to be left back today uh, it is the same starting back four from the previous game uh, we're going to go with a, a pretty fatigued Martial in the defensive midfielder role. Uh, with We're going to bring Zellalem in as well. Um, yeah, as you can see, Salazar currently on international duty. Uh, he's going to be partnered by Fabinho, who's actually our best player at the moment in terms of average rating. We're going to go with Mueller on the right wing. As you can see, Cisneros on the bench here. Only 80% match condition, so... We're going to rest him, despite it being a pretty important game. And then Locklear is going to be on the left wing, as Mischic is also with the under-20s uh, for the US, well, US under-20s national team. Up front, we're going to go with Keane. Uh, he's also pretty fatigued. But at the moment, he's playing really well. He's scoring his penalties when he's been given them. And uh, yeah, he also scored that open, the goal from open play as well after not scoring for, what, 16 hours or whatever it was. Yeah. Bench today is going to be Brown, Besla, Ripken, Gaspar, Aguila, Cisneros, and Carranza. Let's have a look at Atlanta's team here. Bit of a bit of a different team to what they sort of start off with. Um, obviously, the, the two centre-backs are the same, Escobar and Perez. Uh, they still got Nagby there. Still got Gressel and Gonzalo Martinez. Um, I believe they still have Joseph Martinez, the striker, as well. Uh, but I think he's just out for this game. 
due to uh, an injury or illness or something like that. Um, but yeah, Jordan Hamilton, not the best striker in the world, um, but he's relatively good. I think he plays for the Canadian national team. Anyway, I'm just going to tell the boys I expect the win, considering we are the home team. All right, we've got a free kick. Mueller, I think he hit the crossbar there. Would have been a great start. And now Atlanta, they're in behind. I was talking a bit of bit of smack about Hamilton. Hopefully he doesn't pop up and score a couple of goals. That would be worst case scenario. That's a good save by McDermott. All right, Olasunde, Martial. Not a bad cross. Zellalem. Oh, what a decent goal. He's not even match fit at the moment, but that is a really good goal from Zellalem. I mean, it wasn't a bad cross by Martial, but luckily they headed the ball straight to Zellalem. Just on the outside of the D there. And I think it was on the half volley as well. Really nice goal. Well taken. All right, we'll just ease Ola Sunday off as he's picked up that yellow card. Lockley has picked up one as well. I'm curious to see if Lockley is going to develop because he's, I think he's 22, so you would expect him not to develop, but now he's getting the game time despite not getting any last season. So it'll be interesting. Um, I mean, the more that we play him, the higher possibility of him losing the Generation Adidas contract that he has, uh, which will mean his wages count to the salary cap, whereas they currently don't. So it could be very interesting. I think if they play a certain amount of games or game time or something like that, it does indeed get upgraded to a normal contract. That's a really good save. I thought Nagby was going to score there. It is going to be a corner. Cleared away. Kitchen. Ooh, that was close. Very close. All right, so I think we'll bring Carranza on in this second half. We are playing well. We're 1-0 up, so I am pretty happy with that. But Keane doesn't look too good out there at the moment. Only on a 6.6. .6. Everyone else is doing, you know, relatively well. All right, we'll make a sub here. Carranza for Keane. I do want to bring Marcial off, but I don't really think... I mean, Aguila, is he good enough? The only other, other option would be Fabinho swapping with Marcial, playing the defensive midfielder. I think we'll do that. Actually, I might wait. I'll wait another five minutes. Just in case. That should be McDermott, so there we go. Don't want us to make any stupid errors. That's a good ball to Martinez. Oh, luckily for us, he goes for the shot. I think if he crossed that, they would have scored. All right. Let's make that sub. So Aguila for Martial. And then I'm going to swap for Binho and Aguila. So hopefully that'll work out a little bit better. But if we can hold on for the 1-0 victory, that would be massive. As you can see, both their defenders playing relatively well. Pires is an absolute beast of a centre-back. Alright, Gaza. Not a bad cross. Zimmerman shoots, and it's horrible. Alright, moving on swiftly from that one. All right, I might actually take Ola Sunday off as well for Ripken. Um, he's looking pretty fatigued out there. I don't really want to start Ripken the DC United game. I would much prefer to start Olusunde. 
Ripkins is actually quite good, so I don't want to credit where it's due, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Ooh, Mueller with a nice cross there. Locklear. Ooh, goes for the shot. Interesting. I didn't really expect that. That should be full time. Ooh, don't get sent. No. Oh, god damn it, Mueller. Did I ease him off? I don't think I did. But literally right at the end of the game, we're, we're past the three minutes of stoppage time. And he's uh, got himself sent off. Why can't I? Can I just play? Thank you. All right. And it's gone out for a goal kick, but that should be full time. Yep, there we go. 1-0 victory over Atlanta United. I have to say, that's a that's a pretty impressive win because like I said, they're just they were just behind us. Alright, so what I'm gonna do now, I'll I'll advance the eight days forward and I'll bring you the DC United game. Alright, so let's get into the lineup for this second game. Now, it's going to be pretty changed because, unfortunately, both Zimmerman and McDermott have both gone on international duty with the United States. So, we're left a little bit lacking. And, obviously, McDermott, our starting goalkeeper, international duty. Byron Brown is going to have to step in. The pretty dreadful backup probably should have signed a, a decent backup goalkeeper this season. I decided not to, and hopefully we don't pay for it today. Anyway, so he's going to be starting in goals. We're going to go with Olasunde, <clears throat> excuse me, Bessler, Abubakar, Gaspar, Martial as our defensive midfielder, Zelalem and Fabinho as the two center mids, Zneros on the right wing, Mischic comes back in on the left wing, and then we're going to go with Kane up front. Bench today is going to be Fernandez, Salazar, Ripkin, Garza, Aguila, Locklear, and Carranza. Alrighty. DC United. Let's do it. It is going to be an away game, so I'm expecting it to be a little bit more tough than it has been against some of the some of the teams we've versed at home so far. I am hoping that we can pull off a, a decent victory here today. All right, DC United coming forward here. Although all of Sunday doing really well to win that ball for us. However, that was a, a bit of a nothing ball there. Pretty disappointing, actually. And now they're in behind through Mesa. Brown coming up with a decent save. Hopefully, imagine if he keeps a clean sheet. That'd be that'd be pretty crazy. He saved it again. It's another corner for DC, and he saved another shot from the corner as well. And now Keane can actually counter attack. Not a bad cross to Cisneros. But unfortunately, he can't get on the end of it properly. Ola Sunday picking up a yellow card there as well. We'll just ease him off. Haven't had a shot on target yet, so that's a little bit worrisome. Ola Sunday really not playing too well. On a 6.5 along with... Fabinho in midfield as well. We've also got Bezla picking up a yellow card there, so we'll have to ease him off. He is quite prone to the yellow card. I think he was... I think he had over 20 yellow cards last season. Anyway, I'll tell the boys I'm not happy. We only have the one shot on target. And uh, we actually haven't even had a real highlight, so... Okay, we'll, we'll try and make a couple of subs here. I think Ola Sunday is going to come off. Although Kane's in behind, we could have a decent opportunity here. 
Got a few players forward. Gaspar to Mischic, who almost loses a ball. Gets his cross in. Cleared away straight away. And now DC are back in with a counter-attack. But Byron Brown coming up big once again. And we're going to make that change. Ripkin for Olusunde. Make him tackle harder. I mean, just looking at it, I want to take Fabinho off, but, I mean, the replacement is Aguila, so we'll, we'll leave him on for now. DC United coming forward once again. Costa, and somehow they've missed. That probably should have been a goal for them. I think a draw would actually be a massive result for us today. I mean, somehow if we could sneak the victory, that'd be that'd be a, a huge result. But I think a draw with you know pretty integral members of the defense being the goalkeeper and the centre back. Ooh, we've lost the ball really in a bad position there. They're coming forward with numbers. But Brown, once again in goals. Coming up with a decent save. All right, we're going to bring Fernandez on for Keane. And I guess we'll bring Aguila on for Zellalem. I'm not sure if I want to push the boys forward. That could be, could be the undoing of us. One of those things where, you know, you could do it, but it could also backfire massively. And you, you then concede a goal. Gasper does really well, though. Managing to get the ball clear. The highlight's still going, though, so... Yeah, and the big ball over the top. Meza brings it down. 1-0 to DC United. Although it's going to be offside, I think. Yes, there we go. It is offside. He did kind of look offside. But again, you know, out of fence. Very, very susceptible to the long ball over the top counter attack. I mean, hopefully this is a, a highlight for us. I mean, it's a beautiful ball. Mischich. Oh, that was a decent chance, man. And apparently Philadelphia and Toronto are drawing at the moment for all with each other. And uh, there we go. That's that's the first goal of the game. 88th minute. We hold on for that long, and then DC United score through Ola Kamara. Or Kamara. Yeah, just a, another, another cross to the back post. And then an easy tap in for their striker. But again, you know, I mean, if we can get an equalizer here, that'd be massive. But I don't think, we definitely don't deserve anything out of this game, to be honest. Like I said, a draw would be a pretty incredible result. I mean, we're about to go into stoppage time here. I mean, we did have the ball for a second there. And Mischich has stolen it back. Okay. Can we get something out of it? No, we can't. Mischich loses the ball. And DC are on the counter-attack once again. Mesa coming forward. That's a really good sta uh, save there by Byron Brown. Double B. Yeah, I really need to get a, a new backup goalkeeper. It does look like it's going to probably finish 1-0, which is pretty, you know, it's unfortunate. But like I said, it's, I would say, well-deserved for DC. That should be offside. Yeah, there we go. All right, a couple of minutes to go. We've got a free kick. We've got one minute left. And uh, unfortunately, the goalkeeper gets that one. Yeah, not a great game. I mean, they're in behind once again, and they've got a second goal somehow. Um, poor goalkeeping, I'll put that down to. 
Acosta scoring the second goal for DC United. And the goalkeeper getting the assist as well. Just a long ball. I mean, we're so susceptible to it. It's almost... I think I might have to change the the back line and how high they sit. The, the long ball is... It's pretty much the only way we really can see goals. I mean, against Toronto... Uh, with us, it's not Toronto, sorry, New York Red Bulls, when we conceded four goals, every single goal was a counter-attack over the top, so might be something I need to change. Anyway, like I said, we, we don't deserve to win this game, for obvious reasons. Uh, not only are we missing players, or some of the key players, but, I mean, the team just really hasn't played well. I mean, Fernando is one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper there. Easily can score a goal, and he misses, so... Just the, the tale of the game, really. The story of it, as you can see. I mean, we held on for 88 minutes, and then they scored two goals. And I mean, had 10 shots on target, so... Like I said, they deserve to win. We, uh, we definitely don't deserve to, to get anything out of that one. A little bit unfortunate, but, you know, Brown making his debut... Like I said, he really didn't do that badly. He came up with quite a few big saves. Anyway, that is going to wrap this episode up, guys. If you could drop a like on the video, it'd be much appreciated. Head over to the channel and subscribe or click the subscription button down below or on the screen right now. And as always, take it easy and goodbye.